Good evening and welcome once again to Praying the Psalms Through Lent. Each weeknight we are joining together to read and reflect on a psalm and to use it as inspiration to pray for our, our own lives and for our community and the world. Tonight we're going to be reading Psalm 59, so if you have a Bible or a Bible app uh, like me here at home, then you might want to open it now. To begin, let's light a candle. If you have a candle at home, you can light yours along with me there. And we do this each evening as a way of uh, deliberately reminding ourselves that Jesus, the light of the world, shines in the darkness and by his spirit, he is with us now. Let's take a moment to enter into his presence. Let's be still. Let's breathe slowly. And center our scattered and anxious thoughts upon the loving presence of God. Dear Father, as I offer myself to you in this moment tonight, Help me to turn away from my own small self-centred view of the world and help me instead to see your view of me and your world. I invite you to reshape my soul and I ask you to help me respond to the world and to people around me with your compassion. Now, if you have your uh, Bible or Bible app to hand, turn to Psalm 59 uh, with me now. And uh, together, let's keep an eye on it before we read it together. I'm going to be reading it in a moment uh, in the NIV, but if you prefer, you can read uh, whatever English version uh, you have in front of you. Now, hopefully, if you glance at the header in your Bibles, you will see here that uh, the, the, the songwriter, David, puts an explanation for his composing this psalm. When Saul had sent men to watch David's house in order to kill him. Now we can read about this traumatic incident in David's life in 1 Samuel 19. And it's helpful to know a little bit of the backstory of David's life to understand his very strong emotions expressed in this psalm. If you're unaware of David's story, he grew up as a country boy, the youngest son of Jesse from Bethlehem, and he grew up learning to tend his father's sheep, which was a tough job in those days uh, in that country and culture. It meant days away from home, learning to live outdoors, uh, not in the rolling green hills of, of uh, Ireland, but in a rough uh, wilderness, in a Bear grills type of existence, sleeping near the sheep at night, being prepared to defend them against wild cats, Arabian wolves and wild bears. And it was this lifestyle uh, that ideally prepared David to take on Goliath, a huge superhuman warrior conscripted by the Philistine army who were attacking King Saul's Israeli army. And you'll hopefully uh, remember that against the apparent odds, David, inspired by God's guidance, defeated Goliath using just his shepherd's sling, stunning uh, Goliath and enabling David to cut off the giant's head with his own sword. King Saul took David into his service, initially as a court musician, because David had an incredible talent uh, as a musician, uh, but also because he'd impressed Saul's army officers, uh, officers and shown a natural talent as a military leader, uh, David gained experience and popularity in Saul's army. And over maybe a year or two, David's probably 20, 20 21, he was the toast of generals and the public. And Saul, who was a weak king, and a troubled and bitter man since he'd neglected his relationship with God, well, he grew intensely jealous of David's popularity. And to make matters worse, his daughter Michal fancied David. 
Due to his weak leadership, King Saul had uh, a frequent problem with the Philistines who kept successfully raiding his borders. And after yet another humiliating incursion onto Israeli territory, Saul came up with a plan, which he hoped would, would not only make him look strong against the Philistines, but get rid of David as well. So he asked David to lead a small commando raid in a seemingly impossible mission against overwhelming Philistine numbers, with the dangled carrot or incentive that should he succeed, he could marry his daughter Michal. But Saul was confidently calculating that David would be killed in the attempt. David, uh, however, was eager to take the mission and to Saul's horror, not only survived, but inflicted twice the enemy casualties Saul had demanded and returned a hero to the people. In order not to lose face, as 1 Samuel 18 reports, Saul gave his daughter Michal in marriage. But as the message translation uh, puts the next uh, verse, Saul's fear of David settled into hate. Saul hated David. Over the next year or two, after several other abortive attempts to get rid of David, Saul brazenly sent guards to secretly watch David and Michal's house overnight and attempt to kill him when he left in the morning. But David's wife Michal discovered the plot and helped David escape through an unobserved window and covered for him with a story that he was sick when the guards came to her home. David fled to rendezvous with army comrades who were loyal to him and to go into hiding. So thinking of that incident uh, when uh, the guards were, were ready to take David's life and David is there uh, in the house overnight, I wonder if you can imagine how David felt trapped in his house, his freedom restricted, his life in danger from an unseen enemy lurking in the shadows outside. It occurs to me as I've read this psalm that maybe it could have something to help us as we continue to feel trapped in our homes our lives threatened not by uh, uh, army soldiers lurking, but by a virus that's out there around us. Let's read David's words slowly and thoughtfully, and after pausing for a moment's silence, take them as inspiration for prayer. Psalm 59. Deliver me from my enemies, O God, be my fortress against those who are attacking me. Deliver me from evildoers and from those who are after my blood. See how they lie in wait for me. Fierce men conspire against me for no offence or sin of mine, Lord. I have done no wrong, yet they are ready to attack me. Arise to help me. Look on my plight. You, Lord God Almighty, you are the God of Israel. Rouse yourself to punish all the nations. Show no mercy to wicked traitors. They return at evening, snarling like dogs and prowl about the city. See what they spew from their mouths. The words from their lips are sharp as swords. And they think, who can hear us? But you laugh at them, Lord. You scoff at all those nations. You are my strength. I watch for you. You, God, are my fortress, my God on whom I can rely. God will go before me and will let me gloat over those who slander me. But do not kill them, Lord, our shield, or my people will forget. In your might uproot them and bring them down. For the sins of their mouths, for the words of their lips, let them be caught in their pride. For the curses and lies they utter, consume them, consume them in your wrath, consume them till they are no more. Then it will be known to the ends of the earth that God rules over Jacob. They return at evening, snarling like dogs, and prowl about the city. They wander about for food and howl if not satisfied. But I will sing of your strength. In the morning I will sing of your love, for you are my fortress, 
my refuge in times of trouble. You are my strength. I sing praise to you. You, God, are my fortress, my God, on whom I can rely. Let's pray. Lord, thank you, not just for the gift of the scriptures, but that you allow such honest expression of human emotion, born out of struggling and suffering, to make it into print for us to read and reflect on. Thank you that in this psalm, at the very least, David's example shows us that believing in and following you is not the guarantee of an easy life. So if we're struggling with life this evening, even though we have faith, we thank you that we are not alone in our struggle and nor are we without hope. David complains, I've done no wrong, yet they are ready to attack me. Lord, sometimes we and maybe somebody listening to this right now might feel a sense of injustice and unfairness at suffering, even though we've done nothing wrong. Again, thank you that we are not alone in this experience, if it is ours, and that you hear us in our anguished cries, as you heard David. Sometimes some of us may face difficulties not because we are doing something wrong, but because we are doing something right. So tonight we would pray for those who suffer because they have made a stand for what is right or good in their lives. We pray for anyone who has bravely stood against injustice as an employee, maybe in a work situation, against a corrupt supervisor or manager, or maybe against a, a workplace bully, and as a result is being vilified or isolated. We would pray tonight also for those of our worldwide church family who are facing difficulty simply for and because they are followers of Jesus. Particularly, we would pray for millions of increasingly persecuted Christians in China and in North Korea and in many other nations where governments seek to repress or destroy your disciples. Lord, we would ask, please protect and deliver them as you delivered David. Unlike David, we, we don't have an enemy that prowls about and lies in wait for us outside our homes. But we do, like him, feel trapped and confined in our houses due to a fear of the danger of COVID-19 somewhere out there. David talks of threat in the evening. So Lord, we pray tonight for all those who struggle with fear and in particular with sleepless nights after restless days of confinement. We pray for peace for anxious minds, healing sleep for tired bodies and for deliverance from COVID-19. In a place of confinement and weakness, David sings three times of God's strength. So, Lord, we come to you in our place of continued confinement and weakness. And we pray not only for your strength to overcome our weakness, but that we might grow in our relationship with you such that we may be able to confidently say, as David did, you, Lord, are my strength. I sing praise to you. You, God, are my fortress, my God, on whom I can rely. Now let's join together our prayers for our world by saying the words uh, of this prayer. O High King of Heaven, have mercy on our land. Revive your church. Send your Holy Spirit for the sake of the lost, the least, and the broken. May your kingdom come to our nation in Jesus' mighty name. 
Amen. Thank you for joining us again tonight. Please do tune in tomorrow at 7pm when Rosie is going to be taking us through Psalm 60. For now, good night and may the peace of the Lord rest upon you and your family. Amen.